All right, this is for uh, Mihalo uh, Mytik, and if I screwed up your name, I really apologize. Um, so the first thing I would say right off the bat is that you really want to look at anatomy. You want to look at your reference and uh, kind of build it on that. So I'm going to just grab kind of a, a brush here, and I get what you're trying to do, but the problem you're you're working on is you've got. Hmm, how do I explain it? Um, you've got a really kind of distorted idea of what you're what you're trying to achieve, um, and it's it's because you're not understanding foreshortening and you're not understanding the anatomy in general. And so, uh, what you want to do is like like here's the face. I'm going to show you this real quick. So you got your face here, and what you're doing is you are um, you're trying to make the face look like it's looking down. And I, I understand that, and I get what you're trying to do. But the problem you're doing is you're layering the facial items as if they were going forward. So what would happen in all reality is you've got a flat nose, you've got flat eyebrows, flat eyes, and then a flat face. So if you're going to actually do this as a... Um, is kind of a, a building you want to think about this as a third three-dimensional shape so your character here this is like face forward but you you trying to get it to look down and so the shape itself is not going to work that way and so what you want to do is let me erase this so what you want to do is think about how that head is looking so I'm gonna just draw off the side so you've got you know your your base sphere sphere here and if it's looking off to the side like so, it's like this, okay? But you're looking down, so you you need to kind of build out that idea. And so when you're looking down like that, things are going to kind of get a little bit more drastic. You're, you're going to see more curve around the brows. You're going to see more curve around the eyes. And in fact, the eyes, if he's looking forward you, the eyes will be right connected to that brow. The nose is going to force downward, and it's probably going to be forced over the mouth. And so then you'll have a lip, and your chin is underneath that. So understanding that perspective is, is kind of a big thing that you need to kind of pay attention to. Um, so the perspective on the head is a little bit wrong. Um, you know, and if I was drawing over this, so let's just erase this. So if I'm drawing over this in your, your kind of pose, you're going to have the body, you're going to have the, the upper body chest here, and it's going to kind of be squashed down. So the rib cage is, is going to look kind of short and, and not as like emphasized. The chest is going to be looked downward like this. Your neck is actually going to be pushed forward. So these are things that you need to kind of identify with. And then if the, the torso is twisting, so you got torso, uh, upper body. If the torso is twisting, this is actually going to be more forward. So you're going to have more uh, kind of adjustments here. So I'm going to kind of push this pelvis forward like so. And then what you want to do is you want to identify the kind of idea of where your, your kind of legs are going. And in this case, you've got that bow-legged look and feel. And I, I get what you're trying to do, but it's not working well because your one leg is going to be proportionally longer than the other. And so what you want to do is you want to, if you're going to put this leg over here, so like he's he's kind of bending over, he's got his knee, and then he's got his um, calf here with the tippy toe of kind of this process, then this leg here has to basically do the same thing. So it has to identify that there is, um, you know, foreshortening in the limb. And then uh, I also identify as there is, you know, straight for uh, straight forward short uh, uh, full frontal like calf here. And then you would basically put the, the, the leg flat. And so by pushing this back here, you're, you're getting it on a different plane,
but yet you're still getting that foreshortening in here. So I would even overlap some of that foreshortening right there. Same thing with the hand. Um, your hand is not like you, you're drawing the hand out to the side. And if I hold my hands out the way he's actually doing things, you're not, it, it's very uncomfortable. It's very unrealistic. And so if you try and get in this pose, you're, you're going to, you're not going to be feel, feeling good on it. Um, and so what you would do here is identify where this arm is going. So if this arm is going forward, you're going to foreshorten this arm here and then put another foreshortened arm here and then there's your hand with your power in there. Okay, so that's going to be much more realistic. And then if he's bending that far with the staff, but the staff is is um, the staff is actually on the same level as the leg, you're now changing your your perspective. So what you want to do is instead is push this forward as well, like so, and then push this forward as well, like this. So now your staff is much more forward based. And then you're going to put the point behind it and going to basically bring in perspective in this area here. So, you know, those are definitely things that you want to really pay attention to. Um, you know, the same thing with the, you know, the staff. I'm just going to draw the head real quick. The same thing with the staff. The staff doesn't go straight up. The staff is going to go forward. So you want to overlap some of these initial sh uh, shapes here and that's going to kind of push things forward so just pushing that element forward and backward is going to to be much better and then because the character is moving having everything straight up and down doesn't feel very natural there's no movement it's very static so what you want to do is you want to uh, you know swing some of these elements side to side here and back and forth you know, swing these elements around so that they make, like, there's a sense of action, there's a sense of movement. And, you know, from that point, then you want to identify the, the painting process. So your, your idea is this is the kind of biggest kind of point here. So um, I'm going to just go here. So this point here, if this is my light right here, um, let's go with mid tone. So if this is my light right here, and this is my brightness, my my emphasis on you know information, this light is going to be then pushed all over the place. So you're going to have light over here. You're going to have light over here. It's going to have light up here. And this is why taking a photo reference of this, you know, with a big light in your in your hand is going to really kind of push you through. So you're going to have a lot of light going on here. You're going to have some light over here. This leg is going to be just full of light. Um, you know, so that's going to change the process of how you're doing things. So you really want to identify your light source and make sure that it, it's working. You will also have a lot of light. If this is leaning forward, you're going to have a lot of light up here as well, as well as a lot of light coming down here and down here. So those elements are really going to push it. Same thing over on these the, the spherical surface and over even here you're going to get some light kind of pushing back and forth. So just be aware of you know kind of the ideas of how this light works. And then on top of that what you're going to do is you're going to kind of cast some shadows. So you're going to get harder shadows. So if this is coming forward and the hand is above it you have a shadow coming over it like that. Um, you might have a cast shadow over here that's casting it onto this as well. So really, again, you know, if you can get a clay maquette or a toy figure with, you know, just just some ideas where you can actually cast the light on the form to give yourself an understanding, um, and that's going to help you out as well. Same thing over here is if this is pushing forward, you're going to have a lot of light being pushed onto this leg here. So those those are things that I would do. I, I would tell you you would solve a lot of your problems if you would just do the pose yourself and take a photo reference and then work off of that photo reference. It will help you out drastically. I think your story of your character is well done, um, but you just need that, that real life 
translation to make it look as good as it can be. All right?